as an individual, I have a really terrible memory. But one of the things I very vividly remember from being on a flight several years ago was encountering sudden turbulence. A stewardess who was standing right in front of me was walking over to her seat to strap in when a particularly strong one hit. And I saw her fly up and hit the roof of the plane before falling down to the floor. And then she got up and strapped herself in. I have never forgotten that incident and it always reminded me about why it's important to be strapped in because turbulence can often be very sudden. Indeed, especially when it comes to flights, turbulence is one of the most unexpected weather phenomena and even what feels insignificant can actually be quite severe and vice versa. Passengers in the Air India flight that recently suffered injury this week suffered just sprains and did not require hospitalization. But theoretically, the situation could have been much worse. Many news reports stated when reporting on this incident that the cause of turbulence is not yet known. But when it comes to the physics of it, we very well know what causes turbulence. All kinds of turbulence is categorized into four main levels. There is light turbulence, moderate, severe and extreme. As the name suggests, light turbulence results in slightly small bumpiness and a little bit of inconvenience. Moderate turbulence is a little bit stronger with loose objects in the plane falling off and passengers feeling a pull on their seat belts. Severe turbulence is when there is loss of control of the plane just for an instant and there is a sudden change in altitude like a drop or sudden rise and the shaking is much more violent. And extreme turbulence is when the plane is completely out of control and things are getting tossed around violently and the plane is also spinning uncontrollably. There have been no known crashes due to turbulence, but turbulence does cause a lot of issues in everyday flight. There are types of turbulence that are categorized depending on how turbulence is formed and how the wind currents flow. There are four or five that are most commonly known and used in aviation. Mechanical turbulence is one of the more important ones and it is caused because of friction between the air and the ground, especially when there's uneven terrain below. This also occurs when there are objects like building or even surface features. These change the movement and direction of wind currents locally causing eddies and when planes fly over these surfaces, they change the wind currents around the plane. These cause variations in the air pressure above and below and around any aircraft leading to bumpiness. This situation could potentially become much worse if there are very strong winds which could make the eddies much more intense around the aircraft. A kind of mechanical turbulence is the well-known mountain waves. Mechanical turbulence becomes quite severe due to winds going up and down a mountain and these winds are ridiculously strong. So when there are downward winds, the planes that fly in these areas do get affected quite severely. This is especially bad with strong downward currents, but when the air is also stationary with respect to the mountains, it also leads to friction against the plane's structure, causing severe turbulence. Another type of turbulence is thermal or convective turbulence. Over certain surfaces like deserts or rocky landscapes, the land heats up quite rapidly under the sun to an extreme degree and heat starts emanating from the ground. With these convective currents as heat emanates, warm air rises up in the atmosphere and cool air rushes down. This movement of air at a large scale can be quite problematic for aircraft. In fact, it is these kind of currents that can eventually lead to thunderstorms as well. And in extremely stormy conditions, there are cool drafts of wind coming down very strongly that can affect an aircraft. Convective currents and thermal currents are even more noticeable when an aircraft lands on a very hot surface. And as the flight starts approaching the ground, there are a lot of bumps that can move the flight away from the landing path. The approach to the runway becomes more bumpy and the waves can cause the plane to in fact overshoot the runway and then the pilots have to attempt landing again. Then there is wind shear. Wind shear is just change in wind direction or speed or both. 
This especially occurs when planes are flying really high and they encounter the jet stream, which are bands of global winds that flow in wave-like structures over large areas of the globe. When planes encounter these strong winds, of course, it results in turbulence. Turbulence of this sort can also occur when a plane flies through regions of temperature inversions. Now we know that as we climb higher and we get to mountainous regions and we go to higher altitudes, the air becomes colder and colder. But in an area of temperature inversion in the atmosphere, the air starts to then get warmer and warmer as we climb. These cause strong variations in regional wind and thermal flow and can result in severe turbulence. A special and notable type of wind shear is clear air turbulence which occurs at very high altitudes and can be experienced when a plane crosses between two air masses that are moving in different directions. There's frontal turbulence caused by atmospheric fronts. It occurs when warm air gets lifted up and the surface of this weather front leads to friction between cold and warm air masses. This leads to an unstable air boundary and sudden changes in the wind currents between these air masses. Another important one is the wake turbulence or wake vortex turbulence. And as the name suggests, it occurs when an aircraft is flying in another one's wake or right behind another aircraft. These are some of the more known types of turbulence. Like we said, there have been no crashes that are directly attributed to turbulence, but there have been injuries reported when passengers have not had their seatbelts on. If people are strapped in safely, the chances of injury due to turbulence is quite less. People who get injured during turbulence in flights most commonly seem to be flight attendants who are either doing cabin service or are preparing the cabin for landing. Turbulence also leads to damage to aircraft requiring expensive and extensive repairs, especially structurally. Turbulence, of course, are caused by winds and winds are affected by temperature. So, as with everything these days, Turbulence in flights is set to worsen and become more intense with the ongoing climate change because the jet streams are also getting affected widely in this heating world. These changes make wind speeds more variable and also make winds move fast. And in just a couple of decades, it is in fact expected that pilots will encounter two to three times more turbulence on an average flight than they do today.